Well, howdy again, crew. It's Mr. Tribble back here to teach you more about science. So today we are talking once more about speed, velocity, and acceleration and the differences between them. This is a little bit tricky for 8th graders to wrap their heads around because y'all have for the longest time likely been using speed and velocity interchangeably, like the two mean the same thing, and it's not necessarily the case in a scientific standpoint. The teak we are working with is 8.6b. The student is expected to differentiate between speed, velocity, and acceleration, and I am going to show you how to do that right now. When it comes to science, you will be measuring distances, and the distances we will concern ourselves with are the international units. And what that means is we meters. That's the international unit, and you can have uh, variations upon them, like the kilometer being a thousand meters, or the millimeter being, you know, one hundredth of a meter, that sort of thing. In this case, we have a meter uh, being used, and I've lost my mouse, there we go. This Olympic-sized swimming pool is 50 meters in length, whereas this flea is one millimeter in length. Pretty standard. Speed. Speed is just a measurement of the distance you traveled divided by the amount of time it took to get there. Speed does not care what direction you were going, north, south, east, or west. All it is is distance over time. Speed equals distance over time. That's all there is to it. When you're uh, picking out a unit for speed, it depends on what you're measuring, but it will always be distance over time. For example, in cars, we use miles per hour. In jets, maybe kilometers per hour, sometimes miles per hour as well. With snails, it would be stupid to use miles per hour because it's not going to be that much. They're very slow. It'd be more likely to be centimeters per second. Falling objects is just about always meters per second, unless it's a meteorite or something like that. But meters per second is pretty standard for falling objects. Okay, so if in one hour you travel 100 kilometers, you travel 100 kilometers in one hour, what's your speed? Distance over time. That's right, 100 kilometers per hour. Not too hard there. If you travel in one meter in one second, then your speed is... Right, one meter per second. Nothing too hard there. So let's math it out. It takes you one hour to go 40 kilometers on a highway, and then it takes you two more hours to go another 20 kilometers using the streets. So, what's your speed? In this case, we're looking for what's called average speed. We take all of this stuff into account. Your total distance, 40 plus 20, gives you 60 kilometers. Your total time, you had one hour on the highway, two hours on the streets, that's three hours. Total distance, 60, divided by total time, three hours is... Right. 20 kilometers per hour. So, there you go. Velocity, you take the speed and include a direction. So it's just distance over time, but what direction you were going in at the same time. For example, an airplane is moving north at 500 miles an hour, a missile is moving towards you at 200 meters a second, but you're Iron Man so you can get out of the way, you know, that kind of cool stuff. So, what's the difference between speed and velocity? Good. Speed is only distance and time. Velocity includes direction. Now let's talk acceleration. When you hear car talk, when you hear how awesome the new Fiat 500 is, you hear about acceleration. This car can go from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, which would be a really fast car. But it's not just the speeding up. Acceleration isn't just acceleration. It is the rate at which your velocity changes. It is a change in velocity, which means it could be speeding up, an increase, a decrease, or even a change in direction. So, be careful of that. For example, you have a car stopped at a stoplight, light turns green, it goes faster. Acceleration. Easy. That's a change. Then you have a light turn red, the car screeches to a halt. That's another type of acceleration. You have a car take a turn. It doesn't even matter if it's still going at the same speed. Because it changed direction, it's still considered a kind of acceleration. Okay. So, 
how can a car possibly be accelerating if it only goes one speed, 65 kilometers per hour? That's one way. Another way could be if it changed directions. So, tomorrow, we're in class, we're going to deal with graphing these uh, particular equations, and I'm going to be back later this week with another video about the very same thing. So, I hope you all have a good one, and I'll holler at you later.